In this lesson, we're going to take a look at working with tables in AutoCAD. I'm currently on a paper space layout, and I'm going to go ahead and set a text layer current. Then I'm going to begin my table command. I will switch to my annotate tab, then select the table command. The insert table dialog box appears, and I will first begin by selecting a table style. As you can see, this particular template has two different styles, and you can see the results on the table there. I'll begin with the standard style. Next, I will decide if I want to start with an empty table in which I will type in all of the data, or if I want to link to an Excel spreadsheet, or if I want to actually extract data from the drawing. I'll begin with an empty table. Next, I will decide if I want to specify a window or an insertion point. If I specify an insertion point, I can then specify the number of columns and rows and how large they are. If I specify a window, you can see that I can specify the number of columns and the number of rows, but their sizes will be dependent upon the box in which I click and drag to create. In my case, I'm going to go back to an insertion point. I will go ahead and specify how many rows and columns I want. In this case, I'm going to have four columns and I'll accept the default widths here. And I'm going to accept one data row. It is very easy to add additional data rows later, so I'm not too worried about putting in more than one right now. Next, I will decide if my table will have headers and a title. As you can see, I can set each of these to data and have nothing but data in my tables. But we are going to have an overall title and each column is going to have a header, so I'll make sure those are selected. Then I will click OK. Next, I can click to place the upper left corner of the table, and it instantly puts me into that first cell. Let's talk about moving around inside of a table. I can press the tab key to go to each new cell. I'll go ahead and zoom in so we can see that a little better. Each time I press tab, it moves forward. I can also press enter to go down. I can hold the shift key and press tab to go back and I can shift enter to go up as well. So holding the shift key will basically go the opposite direction. You can also use the arrow keys on your keyboard as long as you're not in the middle of a word typing. As mentioned earlier, it's very easy to add data rows. You just simply continue pressing the tab key. When it gets to the end, it will start a new row each time. If I click outside of the table, it deselects. If I click once in a cell, it selects that cell and gives me some grips around it. If I double click in a cell, it puts me in the text editing mode. Whether the cell is highlighted or if I'm in the text editing mode, I can type in either one of those cases. If I want to edit existing text though, I want to use that double click so that I can get in there and edit the text. Pressing escape will take me out of the text editor and back to the cell. Pressing escape one more time will take me completely out of the table. I can select the edge of the table and I will get some grips on each row and column there as well. We'll talk more about those in just a little bit. I'll press escape to cancel. I'm going to go ahead and type in some data in these cells. So I'll have an overall table title here then I will put in some column headings. Next I will input some information here and I'm going to start by putting in the department information for each of these. Once more I'm just going to continue tabbing to get new sales. And then I'm going to click on this engineering cell. And just like in Microsoft Excel, I can use this bottom right corner as a fill handle. If I click this diamond, drag it down a couple of rows, then I can very quickly copy that label to the other rows. I will use a similar strategy for the use column. Almost all of these is going to be Office, so I will enter in Office one time, then copy it down the rest of the rows using the fill handle, then just simply retype the one cell that is going to be different. Then I'll press Escape a couple of times to get out of the table. 
In addition to text, there are a few other types of objects that we can put into table cells. We can put in blocks, as well as fields, and finally calculations. Let's first look at blocks. I can see in my drawing that a block with an attribute was used to call out each room number. I want to place that same block in the table cells themselves. So I'm going to select on this first table cell underneath room number, then in my ribbon, select insert then block. The insert block in a table cell dialog box pops up and I'm going to find my room number block and here's the important thing for working in a table cell the auto fit option regardless of the size of the block it will scale it up or down to fit nicely in the table cell. I can also adjust its alignment in this case I'll put it at middle center then click OK. Since it has an attribute, the Enter Attributes dialog box appears where I can type in a room number. I'll go ahead and click OK to accept number one here. I will go ahead and repeat the same process to enter the rest of the blocks in. So insert block, room number, middle center. I'll click OK. And 102 for the next one. middle center once again, and this time 103. One oh four. One oh five. And one of the way that you can insert a block is you can actually right click on the cell as well and you will find insert and then block here as well. So finally I'll put in room number 106 and click OK. Next we're going to tackle the area. Each of these rooms has a polyline drawn around it and I want to use those polylines in order to find the area of each room. I'll select the cell underneath area then I will insert a field. I'll go to the ribbon and select insert then field. The field dialog box appears and I will begin by setting the category to objects. Then I will choose object. Then I will use the select object button. Then I will come out into my drawing and I will select the pink polyline around room number 101. As you can see it previews a value here. I want to make sure I have it set to architectural so that it displays square feet. You can see some of the other options there as well. Then I want to adjust the precision to give me one decimal place. So it rounds to the nearest tenth of a square foot. Once again, I'll also set that back to architectural. Then I will click OK. Take a look at my table now. And we can see the gray background indicating that it is a field. I'll go ahead and repeat the process for the other cells. So one more time, I'll start in room 102. This time I'll use the right click method and go to insert field. It's already set to object, so I'll choose my select object button, then select the pink polyline around room 102. Make sure it's set to architectural with one decimal place and click OK. I'll repeat the same process for the other rows. In the interest of time, I'm going to go ahead and complete that and jump ahead in this video. So here's the table through 106. I'm going to go ahead and add back in row 107. So I will insert the block with the room number and set it to 107. Then I'll go ahead and also set this to engineering and office. Then finally I will go ahead and add in a field for this last area for room 107, once again setting it to architectural and one decimal place. Next I'm going to add in a new row here to total up all of my areas. I'll just simply select a cell in the bottom row and in addition to being able to tab over to add a new row, we can also use these tools up here on the ribbon. 
I can insert a row below the current row or above the current row. I can also select a row and delete it. So I'll just click somewhere in this empty row I just created and select delete rows. Very similarly, I can select a cell and insert a column to the left or to the right. And I can click in each one of those and delete the entire column as well. So notice that you don't have to select the entire row or column, just simply a cell in that row or column. I'll go ahead and add in a label here of total area. And then I will tab over to just below the areas. I'm going to press escape. I don't want to be in the text editing. I just want the cell to be selected. Then I can come up top to my ribbon and choose insert a formula. I have some predefined formulas here. I can also choose equation if I want to go ahead and type those in. But I'm going to choose the sum option. And I'm going to click and drag between the cells that I want to select. Then click in the last box. As you can see, it's going to go ahead and add in the formula equals sum and then the range of cells from C3 to C9. If you've ever used formulas in Microsoft Excel, that probably looks very familiar to you. I'll go ahead and press enter, and I can see that it's added up all of the area values. Another thing that I can do is combine multiple cells into one larger cell. So for example, this blank cell in total area, I want to make those one cell. So I'll go ahead and select both of them by clicking and dragging. Then in my ribbon, I'll select merge cells and merge all. And it will merge those into one cell. Now it's telling me that only the contents of the first cell will be retained. So the first cell is blank. So when I click yes, it actually goes blank and I will need to retype my total area label. Next, I want to fix the justification of the text. So I'll double click inside the cell to get into the text editor, then select the justification drop down. And I will change this one to middle right, then click away from it. Finally, let's take a look at some grip options. If I select a cell, I'll see the grips around it and I can use these grips to resize the rows or columns. Once again, I can drag that back up to return to the same row height as the others. And of course I can drag the other grip in as well. Eventually, if I drag it in too far, some text is possibly going to wrap to the next row. There we go. So there you can see the computer lab wrapping to the next row. Once again, I can go ahead and stretch it back out and drag the bottom grip back up. If I select the entire table, I get several grips here I could use. I can grab one of the column grips. Notice that when I grab this one, I can change the column width, but it doesn't change the overall table size. So if I compare that to selecting a single cell, it stretches not only that column out, but also the entire table. So slight difference there. I also have a grip in the bottom corner to stretch all the rows and columns out. As you can see, the blocks auto fit to the new size. I'm just going to undo to back that up. And finally, I have a grip down here at the bottom that will allow me to break this into multiple tables if I'm in a tight spot. Once again, I'll undo to get that back. That concludes this look at some of the basic options that we have available to us when creating tables in AutoCAD.